try another one. So it's the same area that's bounded, but now it's around y equals what? One. Negative one. Okay, so I did that on purpose just so we could draw the graph pretty fast. So we're going to be up here. The y equals two. What's negative one to the fifth? Talking about this space. But now it's, it's going to be revolved yeah. around the line y equals negative one. So is there going to be a big space in between that space? Yeah. yeah it's going to be all these guys right here. Cool. Again, are we going from negative one to one still? Is this still a dx problem? Why? That axis of revolution looks like the what? X-axis. It's a horizontal line. Okay, so this is still a dx problem. This is still a top minus bottom problem in order to find the radius. So again, where do we start for the radius? Go to your axis of revolution, and you go to the one furthest away. Go to your axis of revolution, go to the curve closest to it. Okay? This is big R, this is little r. Let's do it. What's the top for big R? Okay, let's go. Remember this is y equals 2. This is 2 minus negative 1. So that actually becomes 3. Little r, the top is going to be this curve, which is x squared plus 1 minus negative 1. So that actually becomes x squared plus 2. Good? So write down your volume formula so you can type it in. The integral from negative 1 to 1 again. Big R is 3 squared minus little r x squared plus 2 squared dx. It in. How was it? Too easy? Too, too forever to do it by hand. Too forever to do it by hand? Now the first one I got 64 over 15 pi. Nice. Do it again. I did not. Too forever. Well, you already know what this is going to give you squared, right? Yeah. That's kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you have to integrate. Then after that, evaluate. Then after that, multiply by pi. x to the fourth plus 4x squared plus 4x squared plus 4. At least you got to integrate that. Yeah, ain't nobody got time for that. What do we get here on this one, guys? 21. 0.78 what? 1, 7. Or 7, 8, 2 if we wanted to round to 3. Which is the minimum? One more. Oh. Now we got a couple of more. Are we okay? We got the hang of it? No? Do it. Another one? Let's try it. Do it. So, it's the same area, but now it's revolved around y equals 5. Okay? So here's the plus 1. Here's the y equals 2. And now we're revolving it around the line y equals 5, which is up here. Is this still a dx problem? Yeah. Yes. So we're going to do top minus bottom because it's still a dx. So for big R, what's it going to be? Go from the axis of revolution to the one <laughs> furthest away. Right? Go to the axis of revolution to the one closest. Little r, big r. Yeah, big r would be. What would be big R? What's the top for big R? 5 minus... 5 minus... <coughs> like. yeah, X squared plus 1. Make sure you put that in parentheses or else you're going to mess it up. So that ends up becoming 5 minus 1. That's 4. Yeah. Minus the X squared. Little R. X squared plus 1. Yeah. The top for that one. 5. What's the bottom? 2, 5 minus 2 is? 3. Ready to run that one? Pi times the integral from, again, negative 1 to 1, right? That's what these guys were. 
uh, big R, which is 4 minus x oh, squared, just have. squared, minus little r, which is 3, just squared, d. Minus eight x plus x to the four minus nine. bounded by these two curves, okay, they want you to find the volume of the solid that is formed when this region is rotated about the x-axis, okay, so we're getting this graph, this space here, rotate around this guy, is there going to be uh, some space that's going to be left over, some empty space, yes, right, okay, that's what you got to check before you decide, do I want to do washer, do I want to do disc, okay, don't just take off and just do washer. Right? You could, but you might be doing more work than you need to. Okay? So, we know since it's the x-axis, it's a dx problem. Big R, we just need to do top minus bottom. Little r. So again, Ricky, go to the axis of revolution. And go to the one furthest away. Then go to the axis of revolution. And go to the one closest to it. Big R, little R. Cool? So big R, what's the top for big R? Uh, X plus 2. X plus 2 minus the bottom? Minus 0. 0 in this case, so it's just X plus 2. Little R is going to be that parabola, which is X squared minus 0, which is just X squared. So write down the formula. Pi times the integral from where to where? Negative one, one to two. Negative one to two. Where did you get those from? From right here to right here, right? That's the space that that area is bounded in. Okay. Big R, which is x plus two squared, minus little r, which is x squared squared. We'll, we'll stop there. I'm hoping that after that you can put it in your calculator. Great. Yes? This is the more important part is to be able to come. Good? Want to try another one like that or are you, are you okay? Otra? Alright. So this one is the same thing but now they're revolving around the line y equals what? 4. So I'm going to erase this stuff because it's going to change. <laughs> now we're not revolving around the x-axis, we're revolving around the line y equals 4, which is up here. Okay, so is it still a dx problem? Yes, so we're still going to use top minus bottom to figure it out. What would be the top and the bottom for big R? Go to the axis, go all the way down to the one furthest from it. Go to the axis, go to the one closest to it. Big R, little R. Good, Sammy? So, for big R, we would have the top curve, which is 4, minus the bottom curve, which is x squared in that case. For little r, it's going to be 4 minus the line x plus 2. That becomes 4 minus 2, that's 2 minus x squared. I mean minus x, just kidding. Mm -hmm. Write down your volume for me. 
pi times the integral from where to where? Still from negative 1 to 2, but now it's going to be 4 minus x squared squared minus 2 minus x squared dx. And from there you put it in your calculator and get it. Good enough? Got the idea? Let's try another one. Let's switch it up now. Now we're going to rotate around a vertical axis. So now I have this bounded space, and they're asking us to revolve it around the y axis. So if I'm revolving around the y axis, what kind of a problem is it going to be? EY. What do I need to remember to do? Make x equals. What else do I need to remember to do? Right minus left for my radius, right? And I also need to use what? Y values as limits. So what do you think the y values for the limits are going to be? Negative 1, which is down here, to what? To 2, which is here. Yeah? You okay? All right, so maybe we should start off by making these guys what? X equals? So square this, square that, so we get X equals Y squared. To make the other one X equals, we just add 2. So X is equal to Y plus 2. And we have both of them ready to go. So for big radius, remember we're doing right minus left for both of them. Okay. The axis of revolution is the y-axis. So we go to the axis, we go to the one furthest away, that's my big R. We go to the axis, we go to the one closest to it, that's little r. And you notice that there's no way for you to do top minus bottom here on going sideways, right? You have to do right minus. In this case, the right curve would be the line, which was what? Y plus 2 minus... The y-axis, which in this case is just what? Zero. So that just gives me y plus two. The other one is going to be the parabola, which I know is y squared. Minus zero. Minus zero, which is just y squared. So set up your volume formula. Pi times the integral from where to where? Zero. Negative one to two, it's just coincidence. Big R, which is y plus two squared minus little r, which is y squared squared, d what? Oh. Can I still put it in my calculator even though it has y's? Yes, do I have to use y? No. Got the hang of it? Yeah? You need another one? You don't think so? One more of these? Let's try one more of these. Okay. So for this one, they're asking us to revolve around the axis x equals what? 4, right? So that's going to be over here. x equals 4 is a vertical line. So that looks like the y-axis. So again, I know it's a what? dy problem. I need to make my equations x equals I need to use right minus left, and I need to have y values. <coughs> and I know it's annoying, I keep repeating it. Hopefully you won't forget to remember those things. Okay, so let's do it. Big R and little r, right minus left to get them. What do I go to, Chris? <coughs> to the axis, and I go to the one furthest away from it. Big R. Go to the axis, go to the one closest to it, little y. And again, some things to consider is, is that gap going to exist throughout the entire interval, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, as I revolve around this axis, I'm going to have that gap throughout the whole interval. Okay? If there's a part where the two curves are not bounded together, it's just the curve and the axis, then you won't have to do it like that because it'll just be a disk. There won't be a hole in that little part. 
It will make sense right now when you see the one in the mock exam. Okay? That one you had to do disc and washer together. You had to separate it into two intervals. All right, so what would be the right curve? Or the big radius, sorry. Four minus y squared, right? And the other one's going to be four minus y plus two, right? Got to distribute that negative. So four minus the two gives us two minus y. Pi times the integral from negative one to two, because those are the y values. Uh, four minus y squared, the whole thing squared, minus two minus y squared. Alright, so I'm going to give you your mock exam and you'll look at question number 23 and it'll be similar to this and let's see how you do on it, okay? <coughs> Got it? Yes. Alright, really? That's about it. <laughs> 